Thank you. First, thank you for the for the invitation. Um, I will uh, I will be presenting uh, this this work that uh, it's it's named it's called the the impacts of environmental policy on industrial locations. That is a transboundary pollution dynamic game, uh, and it's a joint work with Guillermo Martinez Ram from the University of Valladolid and with uh, Maria Pilar Martinez from the University of of Murcia. Um, the idea of the of this work is very, I think, very simple and very interesting. Is uh, to study the environmental problems uh, that arise between two countries, two regions, uh, or two players, and um, they have to decide these two regions, these two players have to decide uh, an environmental policy. The problem is that. When deciding this environmental policy to protect for for for, for pollution, uh, they are imposing some type of cost uh, on the firms that are producing. So this cost will affect the profits of firms, and firms will be tempted to move from one region to the other to uh, look for the higher profits. This is just the uh, main idea of, of the work. So the impacts of the environmental policy on the industrial allocation. Um, what about the literatures we we are embedded with? Uh, we have on we are between two types of, of literature. On one hand, there is this literature on dynamic games and environmental pollution problem that is very a very huge literature that works mainly on, on the problem that I just told you, uh, we have a problem of a transboundary dynamic pollution, a pollution that accumulates over time and uh, affect two countries or two regions or more than two countries, two players. Um, and these two players have to decide how they want to emit, how much they want to emit in order to maximize some objective function. Um, the idea is is very very similar to to that, but they don't uh, study how this affect the allocation of of films, and mainly this type of of literature focus on the problem, uh, on the interaction that the emission decision or the environmental decision has. The, the interaction comes sorry the interaction comes through the. Um, the dynamic of the pollution. There is no interaction in the objective function of the of the players mainly, but uh, there are some papers that take this into account. Uh, the relationship that comes in the objective functions uh, that are developed by Janasse in two thousand five and two thousand ten. If I uh, and these papers, uh, what they do is they say there is some relationship between this trade of these countries that uh, the relationship is beyond the, the dynamic, the, the pollution, and it's coming from the fact that these two regions are trading between each other. So uh, the decisions are, that they, they take about the, the emissions are affecting not only the dynamic of the pollution, but they are affecting also the trade relationships. And through the trade relationships, they are affecting the uh, objective function of, of, of the other player. So um, the other the other branch of literature, yes. Look at them. Uh, the other branch of, of the the other branch of the of the literature we uh, uh, we are in in the middle of is the economic. <laughs> So, uh, do you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so, um, the other branch of the literature is the, the economic geography models with emission and, and problems of pollution that started with the Fluger in 2000, uh, 2001. Um, and there are also a lot of uh, a lot of papers on this uh, on this topic. The idea of this model is that uh, they 
they try to answer a similar question to, to ours, that is how the environmental policy is affecting the distribution of films, but they do some simplifications in the sense that, for example, they don't, uh, the, the two governments don't face a, a game between each other. They don't play between each other to decide the, the environmental policy. Normally, the environmental policy is exogenous. Uh, or the or the the problem or the the, the pollution problem is not transboundary or if it is transboundary, uh, it's not a, a dynamic problem but is instantaneous. So, uh, is there other papers in between those these two literatures as uh, as ours? Yes, in between these two literatures, uh, we are there, but also there is a paper of of Forslit, Okubo, and Sanctuary in 2017 that uh, postulate a model very similar to ours, the economic geography model, that tries to answer what happens when there is a, an, an environmental policy and how this impacts the distribution of films. But uh, what they do is they, um, from the beginning, they assume that there is a, a, a larger region that has a more population and uh, there is a transboundary pollution, but this transboundary pollution it does not accumulate over time. So it's a, a, a simplification there to, to, to solve the, the model, and they solve this model um, uh, numerically. There is, other, there is a, another, another work that is very, very interesting of Janasse and Kame in 2022 that has also an economic geography model quite similar to ours. Uh, with an oligopolistic films, and um, in this case, they, they they try to also to answer a similar question to ours: What happened when we integrate economic geography to these dynamic games and environmental pollution problems? But they solve uh, their models mainly on the for for the symmetric distribution of films. So they say, well, okay, what what are we are going to see what happens uh, if we solve this model uh, in the um, open loop or, or or feedback equilibrium if we are in autarky or we are with free trade but they also they uh, mainly focus on the symmetric case they say the the in the industry is equally distributed between the the two regions and what we want to do is to uh, continue uh, understanding the interaction between environmental policies and industrial spatial distribution. And to do that, uh, we develop a, also a, a two region, two sector footloose capital model. This is a quite very standard uh, economic geography model that has a trade cost for, for the industrial goods. We add to this, to this standard model, to this uh, economic geography model, we add a transboundary pollution that's accumulate over times. And uh, then the, the governments of, of the, these two regions will behave dynamically and strategically. We saw this, uh, this model for the symmetric case, that is when the share of films is one half, that is the, the, uh, both regions have the, the same share of, of industry. And for the asymmetric case, that is the, the case that I'm going to, to present to you today, that I think uh, where we find the most interesting results in, in our case, that is the share of firms could be between zero and one, not necessarily equal to, to one and a half. And then once we solve all this, we let uh, allow the firms to move freely between the two regions. We said, okay, uh, we have um, the, the governance have to decide how much they want to emit. Uh, and this translates into a price of the of the mission permits. Let's say, uh, let's see what films uh, what films want to to locate now. So the the rest of the, the outline of the presentation, I will show you the the model and the the arising dynamic game. We are going to specifically look at the solution of the asymmetric case, uh, compare the welfares of these two regions and how the distribution of films uh, ends up. And if we have some time, I will uh, give you a, a very short note on, on globalization and, and pollution and, and some conclusions. So um, our model um, is a two region models. We have region one and region two. There are also two types of, of goods, industrial goods that are produced in both regions. N1 is the number of firms in region, number of industrial firms in region one. 
that is equal to the number of varieties of industrial goods produced. That is one firm produced one variety of industrial goods. And N2 is the number of firms equal to the number of varieties that are produced in region two. And there is also an homogeneous good. Uh, industrial goods, uh, okay, industrial, industrial goods are produced with labor and capital, while the homogeneous good is only produced by, uh, with labor. These industrial goods produce a cumulative pollution set, uh, and the homogeneous good produce a non-cumulative pollution that I didn't put there that we call Q, but uh, we are going to see it, it later. So there are two types, uh, two goods, two regions, two goods, industrial and homogeneous goods, and uh, two types of pollution, a cumulative pollution set and a non-cumulative pollution. Both pollutions are transboundary pollutions, so it affects both regions. Um, the industrial goods are tradable, uh, but with transport goods. That means that one region can export or import industrial goods, but have to pay transport costs tau, while the homogeneous good is freely tradable between the, the two regions. So the story goes uh, as this. First, governments, both governments uh, of the regions will play Nash to determine the emission limit, E1 and E2. Second, the industrial firms will go to the market to demand emission permits, where the price of these permits will be formed. The price of the permits are gamma one and gamma two. Third, uh, both, both time of of goods uh, will be produced, the homogeneous and industrial goods will be produced, and household will obtain a utility from the consumption of these goods, will be paying wages for, for, for their work and profits for the capital they invest in the production of the uh, industrial of the industrial good. So this is uh, the setup of, of our model. And I will show you a little bit of the functions. I will go very fast there in, in this part, although I like this part, but uh, I want to show you the, the results. So just to have an idea, uh, the households maximize this utility function. That is a linear quadratic utility function, quite a standard in economic geography models that mainly says that the utility depends on the goods produced in region one, all the varieties of goods produced in region one and all the varieties of goods produced in region two, because um, in this type of model, um, the households loves uh, diversifying their consumption, loves the varieties. So their utility depends on both type of goods and all the varieties of goods available in the, in the economy. And also the consumption of the homogeneous good and is subject to a budget constraint. It says that the expenditure in all the different types of industrial good plus the expenditure on the consumption of the homogeneous good have to be equal to the, uh, their income. That's all what, what we have to know about uh, this function. We can solve the problem for the household and we obtain this demand function. It's a linear demand function that depends negatively on the price of the, of the good and positively on a price index because what actually the, the household are looking are the relative prices. If the price index is higher, the relative price of the good will be lower and the demand will be higher and so on. So here uh, there are very interesting relationships that apply to the part of the microeconomic uh, foundation of the model that uh, I will go very fast because uh, I will I want to, to, to tell you the um, the conclusions for the uh, for the for the dynamic game. But this part is quite re really interesting. Um, also, we have the consumption of the homogeneous goods. We can obtain all the demands of, of all the goods. We go to the level of the firms. In the level of the firm, we have the profit of a typical firm of region J. Uh, they charge a price to buy for producing in region J and selling in region J. They have a, a cost of production and they have also a cost, a, a price for the emission permits they have to pay. This part is the, the profit of selling in region J, producing in region J and selling in region J. And this other part is, uh, is the same, but is the part of the profit uh, that of producing in region J and selling in the other region, region H. So what is the difference here? The price 
that they will charge will be different and the transport costs they have to pay uh, for exporting uh, this good. So these two parts, they are selling in both, in both regions and these two parts forms the profit of a typical uh, industrial firms settled in region J. So we can obviously, we can solve this, uh, um, this problem and obtain the optimal price rules that depends positively on the cost of the, of the emission permits the higher the, emission, the, the price of the emission permits, the higher the price they have to charge, and the higher the transport cost, the higher the price they have to charge to the, uh, to the other market. So gamma J, gamma one and gamma two are the prices of an emission permit in, in region one and region two, and tau is the transport cost. Uh, once we have the solutions for the, um, for the households or for the firms, we can, um, we can calculate the, the market equilibrium, the industrial market equilibrium by equalizing the production and the demand. And by equalizing the production and demand, we have something that also have very interesting relationships that I, I don't have time to, to tell you about, uh, but because I think the, the, the results I'm going to tell you are more interesting than this, uh, but we, we calculate this, um, this industrial equilibria for, for the goods produced and sell it in region J and the goods produce it in region J and sell it in region H. We have the, all, all the equilibrium. And also we have the equilibrium for the emission permits market. So um, firms want to uh, produce and to produce, they emit. How much they emit? Well, we assume that for one unit of production, they emit also one unit. So we have here that they produce this amount, each film produces this amount. So how much they uh, emit in, in total in this region? Then the amount of, of emission of each film times the number of films that are in, in region J. And this has to be equal to the emission limit uh, decided by the government. And which, which, what is this emission limit? Well, because all films are equal, we can uh, write the emission limit simply as the emission limit per film times the number of films in that region. So this EJ is the limit the government in region J will uh, choose. Is the emission limit per uh, per film. By solving this this equality, we can obtain the price of the emission permits. Um, okay, let's see now what, what are the, 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 the two types of pollution. I told you we have a cumulative pollution that is coming from the uh, industrial from the industrial films. And here we have the, the amount a, a given film wants to, to, to emit times the number of films there are in region one plus the how much films in region two want to emit times the number of films in that region minus a, a recovery a recovery of the of the uh, environment so we have the dynamic of the of the pollution we know that from from before from this equality we know this uh, have to be equal to the number of films times the emissions of one film plus the number of films in region 2 times the emissions per film in region 2 so we can rewrite this uh, the, the dynamic of the pollution simply as uh, in this way. We have also a non-cumulative pollution, Q, uh, that depends on the production and consumption of the other good, the uh, homogeneous good. And we write it because this pollution does, does not accumulate, it's instantaneous, that are just emissions. We write it, uh, Q is equal to the, um, the production of the, of the two goods uh, in, in the two regions. Uh, we weighted with one half that is the share of, of, of the market. So, um, well, we go now to the, to the dynamic game. Once, once we solve all the private problems, household firms, and we know how the dynamics and the stocks are, uh, we go to the dynamic game. Each regional government knows how the, these private agents behave and how firms, uh, sorry, how prices are formed. So they will incorporate all these into their, their objective functions. And it results that the objective function of the of each um, of each governor, each player, is simply the uh, 
the instantaneous utility this this part is the instantaneous utility i show you i show you before minus the pollution damage of the non cumulative pollution minus the pollution damage of the cumulative pollution the the damage of the non cumulative is measured by sigma while the damage of the cumulative pollution is measured by s sit um because we 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 know that the demands are function of the um, of the price of the permits and the price of the permits are function of the emission limits all these uh, all these uh, functions we have here are at the end uh, functions of the emission limits that the uh, government have to uh, have to decide so we can translate this problem simply into uh, these two these two objectives the objective for region 1 the first one where we um where we have the the different quadratic and, and linear terms in the in the emission limits they have to decide and the objective function of the um of the other player the region uh, sorry of the government in region in region 2 and they are subject to the dynamic of the pollution. Here we rewrite uh, a, a little change of notation. Instead of saying N1 and N2, we change it for SN. SN is the share of films in region one. So one minus SN is the share of films in, in region two, but the, the idea is the same. These are N1 and, and N2. And uh, what is interesting here is that the this double relationship between the the emissions uh, appear because of the um, uh, of the microeconomic foundations that we that, that we give through the uh, new economic geography model if we if we looked at the first objective function uh, of the of player 1 they have to choose uh, he have to choose the um, the emission level for 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 their films that is they have to choose e1 uh, E1 enters in its objective functions, enters through the uh, dynamic of the pollution, but it also enters in the objective function of the other player. So there is this relationship uh, through, the, uh, through the idea that the two regions are trading between each other that makes uh, this do double relationship between, between the dynamic and but also between the, um, the objective functions. The same happens for the for e2 when deciding e2 uh, region 2 is affecting the objective function of the first player so uh, we fully characterize the analytical feedback nash equilibrium in linear strategies for of, of this game and solve for the symmetric case that is when the share of films is equal in both regions one half and for the symmetric case that when sn is not necessarily equal to, to one half could be uh, any number between zero and, and one. As I'll tell you, I, I will talk um, on, I will talk about the asymmetric case that is, I think where we have uh, the most interesting results and um, um, yeah, most interesting results. Okay. Um, well, when we have a share of films between zero and one, the emissions per film, the emissions decided by the by the governments are not necessarily equal. We have that the emissions are function of the stock, as as shown here, and is decreasing in the in the stock of in the stock of pollution for both uh, for both regions. But uh, they they could differ because the number of films are not necessarily equal between the, the two regions. If obviously if we have the same share of films in, in both regions, one and a half, we will have the, the same uh, emission strategies. But also what we find a uh, first a first important reason is that transport cost really matters here uh, to have a uh, different uh, emission strategies. If SN is different from one and a half, if we have an asymmetric distribution of films, but the transport costs are equal to zero, that is, there are no transport costs, then uh, we also find that the emission strategies will be equal and equal to the symmetric scenario. So um, transport costs are, are, are very, um, very important to find different strategies on, on the emissions. Our second result, uh, about the um, about the emission strategies 
is that when we have a, a larger region, imagine region, region one is larger than region two. That is, it has a larger share of films. Sn is larger than uh, one half. Then the emission strategies will depend on the on how is the pollution damage. If the pollution damage is low, is below uh, this threshold that appear here that we call S hat, if the pollution damage is low, what we find is that the larger region, uh, region one, will emit above the symmetric scenario and above the other region. Obviously, the, the prices will be uh, on the opposite direction. But the idea is that uh, when we have a larger region and the damage of pollution is low, the larger region will emit above the symmetric scenario and above the, the other region. So we call this behavior the irresponsible hostage behavior. The, the first word of this behavior uh, corresponds to the larger region, and the second word corresponds to the uh, smaller region. So region one and region two. Region one is the larger region and it's behaving irresponsibly, environmentally irresponsible. It's increasing its emission because the damage is low. So it's decided to increase its emissions to uh, increase its welfare. What happened to region two? Region two is a hostage of these decisions to face the, the damage caused by the increasing in the emissions, by the increasing in the, in the pollution, uh, of the irresponsible region, the only choice it has is to reduce its emissions. So it's hostage of the decisions of the larger region. Uh, on the other hand, if the pollution damage is high, so now the pollution damage is above our threshold S hat, the larger region will uh, become responsible, environmentally responsible. Now the larger region recognize or is accountable that most of the of the emission depends on its decision. Most of the pollution stock will depend on the decision because uh, she has the uh, the larger share of films, and the uh, and the pollution has a an important damage on their welfare. So it will decide to decrease or to reduce their emissions below the symmetric scenario and below the emissions of the smaller region. We call this behavior the environmentally responsible, the larger region uh, becomes uh, responsible, and the smaller region becomes a free rider because the larger region is reducing its emission, it's reducing the stock of pollution, and the smaller region can um, uh, take advantage of this by increasing a little bit its own emissions and behaving like a free rider. Our third results is regarding the, um, the pollution stock. What happened to the steady state pollution stock? Well, it also depends on uh, this behavior we, we pointed, uh, I pointed out uh, before. If the damage of pollution is low, uh, the larger regions behave irresponsible. So what will happen with the stock of pollution? It will have a minimum at the symmetric, at the symmetric equilibrium. And if the share of film start to increase from one half to one, the larger region will start to increase the level of emissions. They have more films and each film is emitting more. What happened? The stock of pollution will increase as the number, as the share of films increase in, in one of the regions. On the other case, if the damage of pollution is very, is very high, is above our threshold, the larger regions uh, behave responsibly. So as the share of films start to increase from one and a half to towards one, the larger region have more films and these more films are emitting more because of the decision of the responsible of the responsible uh, government. So uh, the stock of in the stock in the steady state of pollution will start to decrease as the number of films goes from uh, one and a half towards uh, what we also find but we have to to look at uh, very careful to to the interpretation of of this der of this derivative that the stock of the pollution in the steady state increase with the transport cost 
and decrease with the damage of pollution. The second one is very clear. The first one, we have to look a, a little bit on the, on the interpretations. But the idea is that uh, the stock of pollution increase uh, when the transport cost uh, increases. Uh, what can uh, we can now discuss a little bit on the um, on the welfare on the study state? We on we we can only analyze the welfare in the study state. So I have I, I want this to to be clear. Uh, we are in the study state in in, in this uh, for this result. So what we find is when the when the share of film is between one and a half and one, it's the same. Uh, it will be the symmetric problem if we are between one and a half and, and, and zero. So uh, let's assume that the larger region is always the um, uh, region one. Sn is between one and a half and one. Well, uh, we find that there is a threshold of the damage of pollution that we call S tilde that depends in uh, of the share of films. And this threshold, uh, is larger than our first threshold, is larger than S hat, is increasing in the share of films, and uh, it goes to infinity if the number of the share of films goes to one. And it also goes to infinity if the share of films goes to, to zero. Uh, it uh, it's goes to infinity as the share of films goes, uh, goes to one. Well, we identify three, three possible cases here. In the first case, uh, the damage of pollution is below the threshold. So in this case, the larger region, remember that the larger region is always region one, uh, the larger region uh, will uh, have a larger welfare than the smaller region. If the damage of pollution is above the threshold, so the damage of pollution is, is high in this case, the smaller region wins uh, the, the larger region. The smaller region has a larger welfare than the larger region. And if the uh, share of films is equal to one, that all films, industrial films, are agglomerated in region one, uh, the larger region will always have uh, a larger welfare independently on the of the pollution, on the pollution damage. This is not uh, uh, this go by the hand of these two, actually, because the, the, the point here is that as Sn goes to, in, to 1, these thresholds goes to infinity. So there is uh, no uh, damage of pollution that, uh, that are above infinity. So this is always the, the reason. Okay? So can we somehow translate these, um, these results, A, B, and C, to our behaviors we find uh, we find before yes we can somehow uh, translate to, to understand what this means so point a of the result four are uh, could be because of point a1 or point uh, a2 if the damage of pollution is below the our threshold could be below the two thresholds if it is below the two thresholds we have that the behavior we find is irresponsible hostage. This is the behavior we find. Uh, and the uh, who is winning more, more welfare? The irresponsible region. The irresponsible region always win more than the hostage region. Uh, it could be that the damage of pollution is below the threshold we just find, but above uh, S hat. In this case, what changes is the behavior, but the winner still be is, is still the, the larger region in this case we have the behavior that is a responsible free rider but who is winning is also the larger region um, if um, we have a, a the pollution damage is above the threshold we have the same behavior as before responsible and free rider but now the winner is the free rider and finally, if we have S n equal to one, we have the same as before, and the uh, winner is the is the responsible the responsible region. So can we uh, write this in a sense that make uh, any sense? Yes, uh, we can write uh, some, like some conclusions uh, about this. The idea is the irresponsible large region always wins if the film if the the, the regions behave. Uh, in this pattern, irresponsible hostage, the irresponsible always win, the hostage always lose. 
Uh, and the other conclusion we can we can take about this is that the free rider wins if and only if the pollution is sufficiently high. That is, as the uh, the number of films in the in the larger region start to start to increase, um, for the free rider to to win, it is necessary that the larger region uh, behaves responsibly and more and more responsible as the number of films increases. It's a way of the free rider to compensate the lower uh, industrial share with significant increases in the level of emissions. So needs uh, it needs that uh, to to win it, uh, as the as SN increases, uh, it is needed that the uh, damage of pollution also increases. So this is a, a little bit of the of the conclusions for for the for the wealth. What about the distribution of films? Well, now we more or less we understand how the uh, how the regions decide uh, how much they want to emit. We find these two different behaviors: the irresponsible hostage and the responsible and free rider. And we know more or less how the, the welfares are for these two different uh, behaviors. But we all the time are assuming that SN could be anything. Well, in the tradition of the economic literature, not every uh, share of, of firms is an equilibrium. So we go to the economic geography literature and ask, what is the resulting distribution of film? What is the SN we have to look at? Uh, so we incorporate this um, this dynamic, uh, these replicator dynamics that more or less explain how films will decide where they want to to settle. This uh, replicator dynamics is saying just that the share of films will increase in region one if the profits in region one are higher than in region two. Then the share of films in region one will increase. If the profits in region two are higher than in region one, then the share of films in, in region one will decrease and the share of films in region two will increase. So this is what uh, this replicator dynamic is, is saying. To look at the stability of the, of the possible equilibria we find, uh, we need to uh, derivate this expression. Uh, the, the, this derivative is just saying, what happens if one film from region one from region region two decides to move towards region one? If what happens is that the profit differential increases, more films will be willing to move from two to one, and the equilibrium uh, is unstable. If uh, when one film from region two moves to region one, the profit differential decreases, then the film that just uh, go away will come back and the equilibrium is stable. So this is what the um, what this derivative is saying. And we split this derivative in two parts. Uh, the first part is the solution when there is no uh, emission, the market for the emission permit. So the, the first part of this, of this derivative is the solution of the private agents, the solution we find in all the economic geography models that are similar to ours. And the second part is the effect that have that the decision of the government, that the game between these two governments has on the uh, profit differential. So what happens when the share of film changes, how the decision of the government changes about the limits of emission, how this decision of the limits of emission affect the prices of the emission permits and how the uh, the prices of emission permits affect the profit differential. So this is the part we are more interesting uh, at actually. So uh, the first part, what can we say about the first part? It is always negative. That is, uh, it, it is very common in, in the economic literature. This is known as the competition effect. What happened with the profit differential when the number of films is increasing? Well, this is called the competition effect. Yeah, it's saying that the larger the number of films in one region, the larger the competition, and the lower the profits. So it's a what what they call a dispersion force because if the number of films start to increase in one region, there is more competition. The profit uh, uh, the profit diminishes, and films will go back. So a 
it dispersed the economic activity between the two the two regions. Um, it's a dispersion force. On the other hand, we have the uh, the second part of of our derivative, that is uh, what happens through the emission permit. Okay, through the emission permits, we have to look uh, to uh, our two behaviors. What is happening? Are we in an irresponsible hostage uh, behavior? Is the damage of the pollution is below our threshold? Then we have a larger region that behave irresponsibly. So as the number of firms start to increase in this larger region, it will behave irresponsible. It will set an emissions larger than the emissions in the symmetric case. That implies that the emission permit, the price of the emission permits will be lower than the prices in the symmetric case. So uh, firms in the larger regions pay lower prices for the for the emission permits, have lower costs, and have higher uh, profits. So this will uh, incentive more and more firms to move from region two, where they pay higher prices of the emissions, to region one, where they pay lower prices of emission. This is an agglomeration force. On the other hand, if the damage of pollution is high, it's over our threshold as hot, then the regions behave responsible and free rider. If the larger region behave responsibly, it as the number of films increase, it will set an emission limit below the, uh, the emissions in the symmetric case. This implies that the prices of the emission permits in region one will be higher than in region two. So now, Firms that decide to settle in region one has a higher cost. Because of this higher cost, they have lower profits and they will return to region two. So this is a, a dispersion force too. Mo region, uh, firms move from region two to region one. In region one, they find they have higher costs, so they move again to region two. And the, uh, the industry is dispersed against us as before. So. Can we translate this into something that we can uh, understand? Well, we make these figures that uh, show us the, the equilibria and the stability of each equilibria. We have the share of films here in the vertical axis and the transport cost in the horizontal axis. And uh, the solid lines, this line here uh, at one, this line at zero, are a stable equilibria and the dashed line are unstable equilibria. So what happens when the pollution damage is very low? This pollution damage, as said, is below uh, all the thresholds we know. So it's very low. Uh, in this case, the, um, uh, the regions we behave irresponsible and hostage. We know that when the when one region, when the larger region is irresponsible, uh, this is an agglomeration force. And it's very strong, this agglomeration force, because it will increase uh, the pollution uh, a lot and, and the price uh, of, the, of the emission permits will be very low because the, they don't care about the, the pollution. So this um, agglomeration force is very strong and will always prevail over, uh, the, over any dispersion force there are. That is why the symmetric equilibrium is unstable and what is stable are the agglomeration equilibria in region one or in region two. So what happens? Well, here we have the where we, we end up in the in the stock of uh, in the steady state of pollution. We end up with uh, S n equal to zero at this higher point, or S n equal to to one. This is the uh, these two these two equilibria. Uh, and what about the, the welfare? Well, we know that the irresponsible region always win to the hostage region. So the welfare will be higher for the irresponsible region in this case, when the damage of pollution is very low. Um, what happens if the damage of pollution is intermediate? We put, uh, as, as said now, is between two, two thresholds, is below our, uh, below our threshold that indicates the, the behavior. So we uh, keeps, keep having this behavior, irresponsible hostage, but now the damage of pollution is not very low as before. It's just intermediate. So this agglomeration force that comes from having an irresponsible region is not very strong. 
So it can be compensated somehow with the dispersion for that is the competition effect. The competition effect says that the higher the number of films, more competition, lower profit. The irresponsible behavior says uh, there is a lower price for the emission permits. So the higher the profits, which one uh, will, will win? It will depend on the transport cost. If the transport costs are very high, this part, the transport costs are very, are very high, the competition effect, the dispersion force will win. And the symmetric equilibrium will prevail as an unstable equilibrium. And here we have the, the, the resulting of uh, in the for the pollution stock. However, if the transport costs are low, agglomeration equilibria will prevail. That is, the irresponsible behavior will be stronger than the competition effect. And uh, this will lead to an agglomeration equilibria. And as we know, sorry, uh, when we have a dispersion, obviously, uh, the share of films is equal in, in both regions, so the same welfare. And when we have agglomeration, uh, we have an irresponsible film, the irresponsible region, sorry, the irresponsible region always have a higher welfare. So we have agglomeration and we have the irresponsible region having the higher welfare. Finally, uh, the, the last scenario of this um, of the of the distribution of film is what happens when we have um, a, a damage of pollution that is high. Well, in this in this case, is above our threshold as hat. So we change the um, uh, the behavior. Now the behavior of the region is responsible and free rider. The responsible free rider is a dispersion force because the responsible region say as the number of films increases i will set a, a lower lower level of emissions that is a higher price for the emission permits it's a higher cost for films that are in my in my region and that will imply that i will i'm reducing somehow their profits and the competition effect is also a dispersion force so both are added and both are dispersion forces. With the, the result will be that the equilibrium that prevails is the, uh, the symmetric equilibrium, that is the stable uh, equilibrium in this case. So we have dispersion and the same welfare in both, in both regions. Um, finally, a, a very, very quick note on, on globalization and pollution. This is not uh, a, um, a, a result that we have analytically proved yet, but I think it would be easily proved. Um, and says that uh, tau is our transport cost. So it could be in the economic geography model, could be transport cost, could be trade barriers, could be trade cost. So the idea is that as tau diminishes, we can interpret this uh, as the regions are more integrated. So lower trade barriers, uh, more integration. What our model is saying is, is, is everything is equal. If tau decreases, the stock of pollution also decreases. So globalization, uh, integration between these two regions could be somehow uh, environmentally beneficial because uh, the, the stock of pollution in the, in the steady state is, is decreasing as uh, the regions are more integrated. However, other things could not always be equal. And we uh, have the example of the pollution damage that is intermediate. When the pollution damage is intermediate, we saw that the behavior was like this. Uh, for high transport costs, the symmetric equilibrium is stable, but as we diminish the transport cost, the share of films, the equilibrium share of films changes and start to concentrate in one of the regions and is fully concentrated in region one or uh, in region two. So what that implies for the stock of pollution? Well, we go from this point, the stock of pollution because of the, of the lower transport cost will reduce, but because SN is increasing, we could be increasing the stock of pollution. We, we don't know. What we find that are, is, is numerically, uh, we don't prove it this analytically, is that when we uh, uh, make this figure, when we have the uh, stock in the steady state of, uh, of pollution and the transport cost, as transport costs diminish, we, uh, 
came from, from here, that is the symmetric and stable equilibrium. Uh, and the, the stock of pollution is decreasing. Globalization is good. But when the uh, firms start to, to agglomerate in one of the regions, this agglomeration process, because we, are, we have a region that is irresponsible in this case, is increasing its emission and it's increasing the number of firms, mm -hmm. the pollution stock start to increase uh, until, the, until we are, uh, the firms are fully agglomerated. Once the firms are fully agglomerated, again, um, globalizations uh, start to reduce the, the stock, uh, the steady state stock of, of pollution. But there is here a, a point where globalizations could be uh, very bad for the, um, uh, for, for the environment, increasing the, the, pollution, the pollution stock. Uh, so this uh, we have to to look uh, to the uh, analytically this, but I think it is a, it's an interesting point because when we have a sim only the symmetric equilibrium, uh, globalization is good. When we have only the agglomeration equilibria, globalization is good. But when we have these mixed situations, there is a point where globalizations uh, could be uh, very bad for the for the environment. So just to, to conclude, say that we determine the, these emission strategies with the, um, with the economic geography model that is our microeconomic foundations. Uh, we, we point out the, the importance of the transport cost to have different emission strategies. Uh, what is more interesting is that we find these two types of behavior depending on the, on the damage of pollution. When the, uh, the larger region um, behave responsible and the smaller region behave as a free rider or when the larger region becomes environmentally irresponsible and the smaller region is a hostage of the of the decision of the of the larger region in terms of welfare the larger region always wins and the smaller free rider region wins if the pollution damage is high high enough um, and about the distribution of films we saw that the competition effect and the responsible free rider behavior acts as dispersion forces towards the dispersion of the, of the industry. But if we have a, a irresponsible hostage behavior, then we have an agglomeration force that could lead to, uh, to a fully agglomeration equilibria where we have a, a, a core region that is the industrial core and a peripheral region when, where there is no, uh, no, industrial, no industrial firms uh, at all. Well, uh, I think that's all. Thank you very much for, for listening. And if you have any questions,